Saudi Arabia has pledged to cut carbon emissions to net zero within 40 years. It could mark a dramatic change in strategy for the world's biggest oil exporter. The Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, says it will take more than $180 billion in investments. The Saudis made the pledge ahead of the latest round of talks on climate change, which will take place in Glasgow in the United Kingdom. Well, for more on that, we're joined from London by Dr. Akshat Rathi, a reporter for Bloomberg. Thank you very much for being with us. So first of all, at 2060, it seems like an awfully long way off, doesn't it? Is this an ambitious pledge on behalf of the Saudis or not so much? So most net zero pledges are decades out. Uh, but you are right that uh, the goals that have been set by the US, the UK, the European Union, and even the United Arab Emirates are for 2050. Whereas the Saudi pledge um, matches with what China and what Russia have agreed to. So it is certainly less ambitious than what would have been expected. Uh, but a net zero pledge, nonetheless, is quite an ambitious goal to achieve. And there are lots of things that will need to go right for it to happen. Critics say the plan is a little thin on detail, though. Would you like to see more information in there about how the Saudis are going to achieve this? Certainly. And um, crucially, it's not just about plans going out on how they'll reach net zero decades out, but what are they going to do in the short term? So we got some hints. We were told that Saudis will reach uh, their renewable penetration in the electricity grid to 50% from almost nothing today within a decade. Now, that is certainly a very ambitious claim. Um, and Saudis are going to try and push for electric cars. There's been a goal set for Riyadh to have 30% of all its cars to be electric by 2030. But we also have to put this in context. No country, apart from the UK, which only put out a plan last week about this, has a fully fleshed out in detail plan on how they're going to reach net zero. What's important, though, is to have short term and really ambitious short term plans. Um, and the Saudis need to do more on that. Well, is there a bit of a loophole with regard to oil and gas in that Saudi can ship those fossil fuels elsewhere, they'll, they're burned abroad, and then it's someone else's problem, essentially? Yes, it certainly feels strange for a fossil fuel producer to put out a net zero pledge when most of the emissions that are going to come from the fossil fuel they produce will be somebody else's emissions. Now, just on a technical basis, that's okay, because countries only pledge for emissions that are produced within their borders, within their territories. So these territorial emissions are what need to go to net zero. Um, and that's what every other country's net zero goal is tied to. Uh, now, what the Saudis can do is become a little uh, more of a supportive player in global negotiations on climate change, which they haven't been in the past. In the past, they've tried to uh, delay climate action. They've tried to extend the life of fossil fuels. And if they change that stance, they could go beyond the net zero pledge that they've made just for their own emissions and try and address some of the emissions that come from fossil fuels that they export. Uh, talking more broadly about the talks next week, then the Russians are not going, the Chinese may or may not be going. How optimistic are you that some progress can be achieved? So those are the only two major con con uh, country leaders who are not going. We are pretty certain that the Chinese uh, leader will not be coming. Uh, but uh, there's been a ton of uh, momentum in, in the uh, climate talks. So one of the biggest barriers to the climate talks was going to be creation of a carbon market where countries can trade carbon offsets to be able to help forests uh, in places which have forests like Brazil or the Congo uh, keep them. And there has been a long debate for how that carbon market would be created. And just recently, we learned at Bloomberg that uh, Brazil, which was the biggest obstruction, is uh, stepping back. So there, things are looking better than they were a week ago. Dr. Akshad Rathi at Bloomberg, thank you very much for talking to us.